What up, this is Patrick Hayes, and in this video I want to talk about how to know when it is time to break up with your significant other. The relationship oracle is spoken. Now, I'm not a relationship oracle, but if there was a relationship oracle, they would probably give you some advice along these lines. And that is that, generally speaking, it's time to break up and move on from a significant relationship when there is no more space for either one of you to grow within that relationship. So this could be for many, many different reasons, but one of the ways that I like to kind of um, organize this as a more or less loose system for being able to understand whether this is a viable relationship to continue forward or not is based off of how well the communication is and what our understandings and beliefs are regarding the capacity for our, ourselves as individuals, but then ourselves as a couple and for the other person in the relationship to live up to the necessities for creating the kind of environment that really does help us grow and help us expand as individuals and as a couple. Because as far as I'm concerned, the purpose of relationships is to help each other become the best people you can possibly be. And so if there's some sort of dynamic or some sort of incapacity to support each other, to be the best people that you can possibly be, then that's an indication that the relationship is no longer viable. And if you stay together, knowing that this person isn't actually supporting you to be the best person you can be, or that you can't support that person to be the best person that they can be, then essentially what's keeping you together most likely is some sort of attachment, some sort of attachment to comfort or codependency or a variety of different things that could keep you in a relationship that's not actually serving you or where the other person is not actually being served. And the truth of the matter is that if you're not being served in a relationship, that means the other person is not being served also. Because in order for you to truly be your best self, you have to be being nourished by the relationships that are around you. If you're not being nourished by those relationships, then you're not being your best self. And if you're not being your best self, then you can't be nourishing someone else. So the idea here is to really come to an understanding about what is best for you. And then also have your partner come to an understanding about what is best for them and have them be able to put that into words so they can actually explain what it is that is best for them and what it is that they want to be, the person that they want to be. So if you can put into terms the person that you want to be very, very clearly, and your partner can put into terms the person that they want to be very, very clearly, the person that they're growing into, the person they're aspiring to be, and both of you can have a discussion where in each other's words, I've said this before, you can both explain what the other person in the relationship needs in order to be their best self and you can explain in their own words what that person wants to be to the point that both of you feel that okay the other person in the relationship really understands who I am and who I want to become and what I need to do that. If you can get to the point where you both understand that and you can both express that and be clear that is step one. If you can't get to that point if you can't understand that and have that back and forth, then there's always gonna be extreme conflict in the relationship. And this means that you need to either work within yourself to be able to explain yourself more clearly and understand yourself better, or you need to be able to find someone else that can do that also. Because we can't have a conscious relationship until we can have conscious communication. And we need conscious communication to understand each other to actually fully support each other. But once you can have that, that mutual understanding, then the next step for testing the relationship is, well, does the other person have the capacity to actually support me in all of those things that I am saying I need support in, right? And do I have the capacity to support them in all of the things that they are saying they want support in, right? Can I serve them in all the ways they need service? Can I help them become the person that they wanna be? Or are the demands that I have for what I need in my life getting in the way of my capacity to be able to support their needs, right? And be very honest. It's really important to be honest here because you know, sometimes we have the desire or this clinginess we wanna be with somebody, but deep down we might know that you know, what this person really needs, I can't actually step forward to give them that. So we need to be willing to move away. We have to be willing to say goodbye to the relationship. If we're not willing to say goodbye, 
then that means that we're clinging in some sort of way and our, our opinions and our thoughts about the relationship are going to be skewed because we're clinging on to one reality and we're not willing to look at different realities and then choose the one that is most in alignment. So the question again is, do you believe that you can serve this person in the way that they need service? Is that in alignment with who you truly want to be and who you truly are, right? You have to respect whatever their, their needs are and then respect what your needs are. And if you're meeting your own needs, does that get in the way of meeting the needs of the other person? And if it does get in the way with that, then you have to be honest with the person and say, you know what? It's not right for me to be the person that you need in order for you to be your best person, right? So do you believe in yourself? And then secondly, do you believe that the other person can do the same thing with you? Now, if you're not sure, if you feel like, well, I mean, this, there's, there's so much there and there's so many different complexities going on here, I'm not quite sure if I can really be exactly that person for them. Or maybe you feel, well, I know that I could be the right person for them, but I'm not sure if they could really be the right person for me. I'm not sure if they could do all the things that I would need in order for me to fully be supported in being my best person. Well, if that's how you feel, that doesn't mean that that's the end of the relationship. But what that does mean is that you need to come up with some sort of time frame in which you are willing to explore an experiment that feels good to you to then come to a point where you feel like, okay, we've either made enough progress that now I'm starting to believe more that both of us can do this, or, well, if we gave six months to this and not any progress was made, then I don't see the trajectory moving in our direction. So at the end of this six months, then we're gonna renegotiate, see if there's you know some way of making this work. And if there isn't, if it doesn't feel good, then we're gonna take separate paths. So find some way of quantifying it. One way you can do that is you can take notes on a daily basis on a scale of one to 10 of how well each of you were able to support each other and, um, and help each other uh, in the kinds of ways that you aspire to help each other. And you can keep track of that and then see what the trajectory is. And you can give yourself a certain kind of time limit. Say, listen, I'm willing to invest one year into this relationship to see if this is a relationship that can eventually become viable enough to truly help both of us flourish. And then both of you can kind of take tallies of how well that it's going and then kind of learn what the trajectory is and see there's going to be ebbs and flows, but you can learn what the trajectory is and see whether this is something that, well, based off of how well we did in this last year, that it's going to even out into something that is beautiful enough to help us continue growing into the greater versions of ourselves that it's worth actually putting more time in to continue growing with this person. And if it's not, if you feel like you're not making any progress, you keep running into the same issues over and over and over, then, well, the year goes by and you say, well, that's the time limit and we haven't made enough progress. So um, I don't think this is a healthy relationship to continue. Now, for people that have children, I can't, I don't want to say that I can really speak from that perspective because I don't have children. But what I would estimate is that if you have a child also, that bringing their best interest into the picture is extremely important also. So it's not just about supporting each other, but it is realizing that if you can't support each other to be the best people that you can possibly be, then that means that you're not going to be able to be the best people that you can be for your children. So that's a point to consider. But at the same time, it's also important to consider a child's life and what they need and the kind of stability that may come from staying together that may be important for the child. So again, I can't really make that decision. I don't have experience with that particular scenario. So I'm not gonna say that it's one way or the other. But what I, what I will say is those points that I just made are things to consider when you are making the decision. Decision. So that's all I have for you today as far as relationships and how to know when a relationship is at its end and it's time to move on. So thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. This video is useful for you or you think it might be useful for somebody else that might be asking this question themselves, then please share this video with them. I would really appreciate it. And again, thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you next time. One love.